How can we find out about ourselves on the Camino de Santiago? I want to answer this question by overviewing Michael Burnett's 2021 book, Finding Myself Along the Way. Unlike some of the other reviews on the Amazon webpage for this book, I won't focus on what Michael did necessarily, but rather I want to look at how he found out about himself as he was walking on the way of St. James. And I want to suggest that maybe we can do the same things too. Middle class, middle aged and highly disillusioned with his life in the United States of America. Michael graduated from college and was married in his early 20s. He enjoyed many of life's pleasures but felt stunted by his nine to five routine job. He craved pleasure, adventure and something that he could be passionate about in his life. But at the same time, he seemed to lack courage to do those things. And then felt regretful about the fact that he couldn't see his plans through. Eventually, his marriage fell apart and he blamed himself for not being able to fully communicate his feelings with his wife. He had unfulfilled dreams. Yet, as desperate as he was for something different, Michael didn't know how he could go about getting what he wished for. As he saw it at the time, the Camino de Santiago seemed like a way of doing things in a different way. He was looking for a new direction and a new way of life and to become, as he describes it, a better version of himself. And what I think he means by that is he wanted to be more authentic and true to himself. He was hoping to find meaning in his life. He hoped that he could connect with others and find a way of uniting a passion with meaning in his life. Now there's a lot that Michael learns about the meaning of life on the Camino de Santiago. But the gist of it is this, he learnt about the simplicity of life. He got a lot fitter, of course, and he felt as if he was becoming more closer to himself. And those seemed to be improvements in his life that he had never seen before. So there was a transformation, but how did that transformation take place? Let's look at five ways in which Michael transformed his life. The first thing, is that he meets people and he has conversations with people that he's never met uh, before and he makes friends and he tells stories. And by doing that, he makes connections and he feels the camaraderie that can sometimes happen, that usually happens on the Camino de Santiago, if you let it happen. He gets excited about his walk. He gets excited about meeting other people and he wants to share his stories. And as time goes on, he finds it easy to do that. And he starts to share his innermost secrets and his innermost feelings. And he does all of that with people that he's never met before. And he notices that things can become very deep very quickly. Now, as Michael is talking to other people, he obviously listens to what they're saying and he enjoys receiving the advice that he gets and the suggestions that he makes use of. He pivots back and he starts to have an inner dialogue with himself, where he talks to himself inwardly and he listens to what he has to say. He compares his own life with the life experiences of other people and that leads him to further introspection. He ends up with what I think is a deeper and a bit of understanding of things that have happened in his life. For example, he could never figure out why he wasn't happy, but as he thinks about things and as he listens to other people, he starts to figure things out and to see that his life hasn't been much different from many other people's. He learns that his life is a bit like climbing a mountain or a bit like the ebb and flow of the sea or a river where things move in and out and change over time. He finally starts to join the dots together, as it were, in the events of his life and he starts to see how it is that he ended up on the Camino de Santiago. And as Michael figures things out, he starts to realize that he has advice and wisdom that he can pass on to other people. And that's advice and the wisdom that he can also pay attention to himself. For example, he sees that he's in the same situation as many others, others who can't figure out what their purposes are in life. But he tells them, for example, not to get swept up, as it were, in life's responsibilities. And in some senses, to live a life that you carve out and you make for yourself. He advises other people to be honest with themselves and to be honest with others. And he sees 
that over time that wounds can heal. Finally Michael realises that he needs to act himself and he starts to talk with other people about what their lives might be like after they leave the Camino de Santiago. He realises for himself that he needs to be less self-centred and he admits that he's being brutally honest with himself and self-aware about his own flaws and about his own failures. He believes that on the Camino he's become more of himself. He feels that he's more confident and that his life might start to have some kind of direction. But, and I think this is a crucial point, he's still not clear about where life will lead him. That's still something that he has to figure out. And so the Camino has provided some answers, but not all of the solutions in his life. So to sum up, we learn about ourselves on the Camino de Santiago by sharing our lives with others. We share our lives with others and we listen to others as well. Now put differently, I don't think that there's much that we can learn about ourselves if we just stick to ourselves. So Michael Burnett went through five different ways, five different stages of learning about himself. He met other people and he spoke to them. He listened to what they had to say and then he compared their life experiences with his own. After that, he started to see his life in a new way, with new perspectives. He then shared his own wisdom and experiences with other people. And finally, I believe that as he was doing that, he was also calling himself to a particular kind of action. So I think that this is a model of reflection and introspection that we can use in our own life and in our own experiences on the Camino de Santiago. And if you do that, I wish you a very buen Camino. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. That he wanted to be more authentic, 